Hello! Clap! Welcome to another episode of Kitsacast. I made it, you made it, together we made it to episode 9. Hopefully we make it to episode 99. And I'm already reconsidering certain things because of you, not because of me. Uh, I can do this all day. I can record this every night. Super fun for me. But I think it might be too much to do a daily podcast for a lot of people. Like, I think it's hard for people to keep up. Like, they want to watch, but it's hard for them to watch daily. Because, like, 30 minutes to an hour daily might be too much. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hate when I, you know, I'm so early into this and I'm reconsidering something. So, I'm scared to say this, but fuck it. Here, I'm going to make a promise. I'm go, going to go for 100 days straight until we get to an episode 100. And then I'm going to consider the results of what people say. Should this be daily? Should it be weekly? Should it be daily but audio only? Should it be weekly but audio only? I already reconsider things and I'm like, no, make it to episode 100 first and then we're going to see. Today we're going to talk about, finally, we're going to answer that listener question about how I started teaching workshop and how I started speaking at conferences and everything else. I'm going to go in details about that story. So that's the topic of the day. You might be looking at my smile and you might be like, oh, I'm glad that fake bridge tooth they put in yesterday holds on and didn't definitely fell off today and there was no problems any problems with that today i would gladly tell you more about it later but i i like it's funny that you think that uh walk with me don't forget to walk with me like we see you said you promised yourself some of you that you're gonna walk anytime you start listening to this podcast so the time is now lace your shoes it's raining it's snowing doesn't fucking matter go for a walk you're gonna thank me later maybe in the comments send me video or comment questions no one sent me video questions no one sent me comment questions People ask me questions on Twitter, but here I'm disappointed in you guys' ability to ask questions. Can you say you guys' ability, like you guys' ability, whatever, dude, you get what I'm saying. I'm going to the conference, next Congress, conf, whatever, 2nd of February, I hate that name for a conference. I can't wait for it to be over, but I have to repeat it for 10 more episodes and I'll, like, I have to Google the name. What is it called? Next Congress, next JS. Congress, next JS. Such a horrible name for a conference, but whatever. I'll see you in Warsaw. So... Before we go into the day, before we go into the topic, let's do a quick Benji review. And I'm sorry for everyone um, who complained that my screen was cropped. I didn't realize when I was recording the video, the screen was full. And then when I was exporting the video in Premiere, somehow it got cropped. So both my face and Benji got cropped. It's going to be fixed. Today's episode is fixed. And uh, the next episodes are going to be fixed. So I want to flex on you here that finally, man, I've been in a rut for so long with my habits and I think this podcast helped me, so thank you in a way, that I got a golden freaking section and a golden section is when you do all the habits in a section. So I completed all of my habits in my anytime section and I, it's been so long, like I got so tired of this red, 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 red everywhere, so now I finally see something golden, so no soda, no alcohol, no bread, no fast food, no juice, working out, shower, sauna, one hour walk. No sweets, filling activity rings, protein shake, and meeting hydration goal. Like, I did everything there. Freaking everything. The night routine, we're still ignoring that one. I started drinking uh, magnesium with vitamin B6 and with zinc yesterday. So, I added this habit. Hopefully, I don't forget this one. The morning was pretty great. So, I'm still missing sunlight because I'm not into the habit of walking my dog because it's snowy outside. But I should just walk in the snow. Like, previously, when we didn't have a house, I didn't have anywhere to let him. So, I would just put on, you know... Shoes, jacket, hat, and I would go out in the snow. Now I don't, so I don't get my morning sunlight. Uh, no social for one hour. I'm actually not using social. Literally nothing. Discord, Slack, Telegram, anything until noon. Uh, no, uh, until 11 o'clock and some of them until noon. But I check YouTube Studio. So I got to figure out a way to block YouTube Studio in the morning until 11 o'clock. No YouTube Studio. No breathing exercises and no morning journal. Other than that, I absolutely crushed it. Cold showers are becoming easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Like I started to enjoy them. I started, started to uh, to actually get used to them. I hung on a bar. I continued my plank. I want to increase my hanging on a bar by one second, which is very freaking hard. You need a strong grip. My grip is not strong. It's annoying. But I just want to increase it by one second every day. And then my plank, I want to increase it by five seconds every day. But I didn't today. So I, I did one minute. And the other day, yesterday, I did one minute. But tomorrow, I want to do one minute and five seconds seconds and eventually get to you know two and three and i've never done two in my life i think my my record for planking was one and a half minute if i'm right so those are the habits let's look at the other things the walking got used to the habit easy walking in the morning so ten thousand steps i did them in the morning one hour walk on a treadmill pomodoros i worked for two hours and six minutes today it was hard to concentrate it was <sighs> it all started with me losing that fake tooth from yesterday <laughs> you remember that nice beautiful fake tooth that the fancy professional lady inserted yesterday and I praised her so much but what I remembered when I was bashing that intern who did my previous like who did the job previously 
like she told me there are two options like the gap here is weird so she was like i either can make it look pretty and exactly like your other teeth and there's a bigger chance it's going to fall down or i can make it look uglier but there's a bigger chance to stay so i was complaining that she did an ugly job but i forgot that that thing stayed for very long this lady yesterday dude did an amazing job you can almost like not, not notice that i it, it's a fake tooth but it fell today like i, w I wasn't even eating even anything hard i was eating a freaking salad and the, the thing fell off and i was like is something crunch honey did you put walnuts in the set oh fuck it's my tooth god damn it and i text them angrily I'm like you gotta fix this today your boy has a podcast with 100 views he cannot go on the podcast again looking to the side so they were like fine you can come at 4 30 and I, in the morning i was like oh i have an appointment at 4 30 well this day falls apart right makes sense magically pause the video just so i can log my food here so we can talk about that so yeah that's uh, I mean, there are a lot of things with, which threw uh, throw off my day. And I honestly, I want to get to the point of this podcast when I look back at these early episodes and I laugh at this person. Like, I really want to be able to adapt to any type of day. Like, I'm joking about, ha ha ha, the dentist, but I really hate that trait in myself that one little thing can happen and I'm like, oh, something always happens. Also, we had the cleaner again today. Also, she freaked me the flippity fuck out because my wife was nursing upstairs and she finished with the upper floor and she wanted to clean this floor. And I, I have this resistance, like this office, I'm like, how about next week? How about next week? How about next week? Because like, I don't want to be interrupted. I was actually in deep into my work. I was Pomodoroing. I was focused and everything. And you would like, because she's never, she's, she's never done this before. <laughs> like I was wearing the um, noise canceling earpods and I was pumping the new Lil Dicky album, Pin It, and that I've been babbling about the last couple of days. It's great. If you have watched the show, if you haven't watched the show, I don't think you're going to like the album. If you don't like comedy rap or whatever, it's going to fly over your head anyway i was bumping that and i was on this bouncing blue thing that i showed you i was standing you know vibing whatever and suddenly a person appears but not far she didn't stand far from me to, to wave or whatever she appears right here to my left here she's like sir i don't know she said something in not uh, in polish i think and i jump like when it comes to that jump scares that's why i never play horror games that's why i never watch horror movies anything that has a jump scare i'm out i have no idea how i played the Last of Us 1 and 2. And I'm replaying them and I'm planning to replay them. I go through those jump scares. But anything more than that, I'm like, I'm like done. I jumped. I jumped and I was like, Jesus Christ, what happened? And she started laughing. And I'm like, hey, please don't do this next time. And she was like, yeah, but there was no one around and whatever. I'm like, I don't know. Ask my dog. I hate jump scares. So anyway, she was around and doing stuff. And I was like, oh, should I go work out? And I'm like, oh, I'll let her finish the gym. And I'm like, should I record? No, but she's going to bang with the thing. So class like... The good thing about this podcast is I'm catching myself repeating shit. And I wouldn't want to be the person who repeats all of these things. Like, they sound like excuses. So eventually, like, I want to fix them. Like, I wasn't doing planks and I wasn't doing hanging or whatever. And I'm like, you don't want to go on a podcast and constantly say, I have an excuse for the cold showers. I have an excuse for working out. So I guess the podcast works. So that's great. What else? Sleep time and sleep score. I went to bed late. It wasn't 10 p.m. It was around midnight. Um, but I wasn't like, I wasn't gaming or anything. We just stayed with my wife and there's like, when you have a baby, it's, um, it's very hard to find time for just yourselves, you know, just to even talk and make some tea and just talk. So we stayed late, late last night and we were talking and it was nice, even though I know she's sacrificing her sleep because she would have to wake up in the middle of the night to feed the baby. And I'm sacrificing my sleep. I would have to wake up early and bitch and complain on a podcast about not working enough in a day. Hey, I have problems. Okay. But we, we stayed until uh, we stayed until midnight and today I think I woke up around uh, 8. But I woke up kind of okay-ish. I didn't wake up in one of my moods. I woke up kind of fine. Fasting was fine as you can see here. I forgot to start my fast so I'm going to start one now. Uh, I think we started it around yeah 6.30. 6.30 is when I ate my last meal. Uh, meals of the day, as you can see, everything is 100. Um, I got these coconut chips yesterday while I was on my let's get inspired in the shopping in the supermarket. I, I saw these like coconut flakes and they were like coconut strips, chips, whatever they call it. It's just coconut with whatever. They weren't bad, but I sh until I reach 85 kilos, even something that's healthy shouldn't be around, especially something that should be snacked on because I eat emotionally and I wasn't even hungry. I was just rummaging through drawers and I found this. I'm like, oh yeah, you bought this healthy thing yesterday. How about you eat it in one sitting? So I shouldn't have snackable things around unless they're baby carrots or whatever, which I cannot find anywhere, dude. If someone is from Poland and you know an online place where I can find a bag of baby carrots, please send me a link. I'll send you a free license to all of my apps if you find me baby carrots in, in freaking Poland. 
So weight stayed the same because I asked the universe yesterday. I was like, hey, universe, uh, I'm losing too much weight. And the universe answered, no problem. Today, you're going to be the same weight. So universe, if you're lessening tomorrow, 100 grams or something. That would be nice. Workout, I crushed the workout. I have printed uh, previously this uh, a photocopy of the letter that I wrote to my daughter that I'm going to be fit and everything. He stays at the gym, but it doesn't do in not like like I don't see it. Like I'll see it in the middle of a workout. So the point of that was before the workout to get inspired that I should work out that day because it's it's so hard, dude. I find excuses. So I texted my trainer, my pre my ex trainer right now. I was like, hey, do you know a trainer in my city? I I want to start training with a person because I'm training with this app that I told you, Copilot. And um, with Copilot, like the trainer gives me a program what I should do, but he cannot control my breaks. He cannot control how hard I go. He cannot control um, if I'm doing the right move or whatever. Like I push myself and I finish the workout and even did extra 15 minutes of chest press and bicep curls and, you know, the disco workout. That's what I'm going to add. But um, I still feel like I would get more pushed with an actual trainer just to get something hard, something that you don't want to do. Like I kind of, I, I even looked at my training today and I'm like, I'm only going to do this if I like the exercises. That's the attitude that I went to in this training. So like, we go hard, boy. I went like, oh, let me just open and okay, we have pull-ups and I like this and I like that. And thankfully, I like the exercises. But what I liked about my previous trainer and hated at the same time, but it's good for, you know, for growth, is you go and he's going to be like, lie on the ground and do some leg things with a ball. And you're like, oh, I hate this one. But that's what helps muscle growth. So I really, really want to work out with a trainer again. I started Googling. I asked my second assistant, because the first assistant hasn't started, to start finding a trainer, some good trainer in the area. And I want the person to come three times per week and do a one-hour training. So I want to bump it from 30 minutes, which are like, oh, cute, I'm lifting, to one hour, baby. We're going to get swole this summer. So what else? Uh, Pomodoros, as I, I, I think I already explained the Pomodoros. Let me just quickly, like Benji still doesn't have a goals feature. It's going to have soon. Like goals are going to be connected to your habits and your tasks and everything else. Like goal is a higher order thing, let's call it. Like I want to lose weight. And then you connect the goal with, I'm like a professor with this freaking mark, and then you connect the goal with your tasks and habits. Because if you don't connect it, it's not going to get done. So anyway, my goals are getting to 85 kilos, which I'm moving towards it. Paying out this house, I'm not, we're going to talk about money today. We're going to talk about money. I'm not doing anything in particular right now. I'm leaving money on the table when it comes to paying out this house. Four books per month. I'm reading 15 minutes per day, so that habit is coming back. But I think if I don't start reading 30 minutes, like 15 minutes in the sauna and 15 minutes before sleep, this is not going to happen. Six pack this summer, it really depends if I find a trainer. I think if I find a trainer and we work out one hour, three times per week, I'm going to have a six pack this summer, but we'll see. I've never had one. I'll be so fucking surprised. Like I would I would probably bump myself in, in stoplights and in people and whatever, because I'll just be staring at my six pack. I'll be like, holy shit, is this real life? If it ever happens. And fixing leg pain. Like today I wanted to contact the guy about the exercises because this is another thing that I'm droning on on the podcast is like my goals, my goals, my goals. And I feel guilty if I just keep mentioning my goals, but I'm not doing anything about them. So I want to add that as a feature in Benji. Like you add your goals, but then daily you have to say, what have you done about them? So you know you are a bit more realistic instead of just fluffy with your goals. Um, all right, I think we can start with the day. 13 minutes in, start with the main topic. Why not? I got a new cup. As you can see, I wanted to put a Sizzy sticker on it, but... I'm so bad at marketing. I don't even have stickers for my own app. We made one batch of like 500 stickers. We gave them away at conferences. And now this would be the perfect Sizzy color for the perfect sticker. If someone has a Sizzy sticker, please send me one. It's my own app. So I, I hate that washing machines like do this shit, you know. So I guess there is a difference between the Chinese thing and the Stanley Cup thing. Or just washing machines just suck because they're staining machines. It took one wash for this to look like that. It's, it's annoying. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Fuck work for home. That's 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 what I have as one of my topics. I I thought that if I have an entire floor of a house for, I literally have the entire floor for myself right now. I thought I would be happy, and I thought that work for home would be amazing. It's not. Eventually, it's like maybe next year, maybe the year after that. I would still want like I'll make this room into something fun. I'll put a pool table. I'll put a basketball hoop. One of those indoors that they had indoor ones that they have in our arcades ping pong table, a bunch of things. Like I'll make this a chill space. I'll use all this space. And I want to pack in the morning, three meals, two meals or a snack or whatever, pack a little backpack, kiss the kids goodbye, kiss my wife, kiss my dog, like grab everyone, just give them a giant kiss and then ask them, hey family, who is the singer of Chandelier? What's that? See ya. And then until five o'clock, four, three, whatever, I'm at work because at home, there are distractions. Like you have the cleaner, you go upstairs, you open drawers, you want a snack. 
but the fridge, you see something. The, tr the trash men collecting people, trash men collecting people, Jesus Christ, my English. The trash people, how do you call them? The people who collect the trash. They come by. The fucking courier rings the doorbell. My wife is nursing. I have to open, like, I cannot get into a deep flow when there's so many things to do. Like, I'll see my dog and I'm like, oh, his fountain doesn't have a water. And, like, I constantly go upstairs to grab, I don't know, water or whatever. And I cannot restrain myself to this floor. And even if I do, I hear sometimes my my daughter crying. I hear the dog barking. I Like, I hear my wife walking or whatever. I analyze it. And so you're, with your mind, you're halfway somewhere else. And I know that there are people who can work even if they're in a tiny apartment with someone else. Amazing. Good for you. I'm not one of those people. Um... But I, I, I don't like it. I got irritated today with the cleaner and just moving and banging doors and everything. I'm like, God, I want to focus and fucking work. Now, there's been many days when I was in that office when I was actually procrastinating. But I've never been more productive than when I had an office outside of home. I would just bike with my bike, go there. There's nothing. Like, I didn't keep any ingredients. I didn't keep any um, groceries. I didn't keep any snacks or anything. It was just like, you got to get your work done. I was streaming for four or five hours. I would do a long stream. Then I would go to my training. And that entire chain of events, like from the morning, like getting dressed, getting showered, like looking nice and everything, instead of like, oh, I'll be in my pajamas and I work. It was really nice for me and I kind of miss it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, what did I want to get into? Let me just answer this freaking question before I talk about the other things. So, Patrick Arminio, hopefully I didn't butcher your name. Patrick91 asks on Twitter, do you have any recommendation for starting workshops for companies? I have an open source library and I'd love to do workshops about that. So, um, how I started doing workshops, I was never in the, like naturally, before starting doing workshops, I wasn't in the teaching workshops business. Life 101, he figured it out that before doing something, he wasn't doing something. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. So what I'm trying to say is, and I need to leave this marker because it makes me feel smart, okay? So what I was trying to say is, um, Nick Graf, which you might know from Twitter, asked me, hey man, I'm doing, I plan they asked me to do a workshop at a conference, and do you want to do it with me? We're going to create the material together. And it happened like one of those school, high school projects, you know, where you do the project together. I did most of the material. I think he was guiding me or something. But I remember that I did most of the presentations, exercises, all of that shit. Then we met in person and we did a little bit together. And then we did it. And I'm like, wait, this is interesting. This is easy. I like teaching. I like teaching. I like babbling, as you can see, by doing this podcast. I like people extracting some value from me. Like it's definitely something that brings me happiness. And also it brought a little bit of, money stacks right so it's it's a big amount i don't remember how much they paid for the first conference but i'm like wait we just hung around while these people worked on the exercises and stuff and we made this much money huh how about i dump everything in my life and i just start react academy so that's how i started react academy i quit my 100 euros per hour i think i was making their um, freelance job so i was making 100 euros per hour my family freaked out they were like what are you gonna do why are you doing that your job is stable on the street. You know, moms, dads, it's classic. Like, what are you going to do? I get them. They're scared for your stability and everything. But when I'm certain that something's going to work, I have to leave this freaking marker. When I'm certain that something's going to work, I just dump the previous thing and I don't give a fuck. So I started doing workshops. Uh, and how I started doing workshops, that was your question, is by just believing that I'm not going to know everything when I do this workshop. Okay? So I'm going to go and I'm going to do this workshop. But when people ask me something that I don't know, I literally go, sorry, man, I don't know that. And I think that is the difference between me that has done like 100 plus workshops and people who want to start teaching, they probably know more than me, but they're like, but I don't know anything and I don't know everything. And if they catch me that I don't know everything, it's going to be shame. Like, no one gives a shit. At the end of the day, the company is going to pay you. Try to know as much as you can. But like, that's it, basically. That That's it. So what I did, how did I find my workshops is I think I was invited to a conference to speak or whatever. And I asked them, hey, do you maybe want to do a workshop together? And then I cold emailed a bunch of conferences. I'm like, hey, I see you're doing React, blah, 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 blah. That's a, that's a city in France, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so I would love to do a workshop. And from, let's say from 10, 15 people that I emailed, like a couple of them didn't answer. A couple of them said no. A couple of them, I only needed one. But a couple of them said yes. And the snowball started rolling, you know, and they said yes. And I started doing these workshops. I got better. I made an app, of course, to teach my students. And I actually think that my workshop material and the way I teach, like with the app is very underrated, tap myself on the back, good for me, but I cannot focus on one thing. Like if I was only in the workshop business and I didn't have this podcast and Benji and Sissy and all this other shit, I would have fucking kicked ass. And ironically, I would have made the most money. If I just stuck 
to doing workshops. Dude, I would pay off this house and pay off 10 more houses because it pays a lot. But I cannot focus. As I, as I mentioned in a previous podcast, I do one workshop for a couple of days. It would pay me shit ton of money. I'm like, huh, it's so nice getting this much amount of money in a couple of days. And then for months, I do nothing. I don't bother finding workshops. Like I have this, like I want to tie tie this conversation about the conferences because I think I answered your question. Basically, you have an open source library, right? You want to teach about it, start emailing conferences, start emailing companies, cold email them. Hey, I would like to do a workshop. It costs that much money. Start slow and for every yes, just increase the price, increase the price, increase the price and just be comfortable that you're not going to know everything. Be confident in yourself. I've done a React Native workshop for a company in, in, uh, in England. I don't even remember the city. I think it was Portsmouth. And someone emailed me, hey, can you do a five day, like a full week advanced React Native workshop? And I knew, I haven't even tried Reactive in my life. But Reactive, they say Reactive, React Native, ever in my life. I knew React, I knew everything, but I didn't know React Native. So I immediately replied, yes, sir. I even replied in British, of course, mate. If you just give me a ball, well, or I'd be happy to. I, I'm terrible at British accent, my wife is better. But um, I was happy to do it for them. And then... We scheduled it a month later, and then for a month, I just closed myself at home and learned everything about React Native. I had very good material, and I taught them from basics to super advanced React Native, which right now, I don't even remember it. Like, I don't, like, if you ask me to do React Native right now, I forgot everything. But I remember, like, they took me to fancy restaurants and this and that, and they were so happy with me and the material. They're like, wow, you have so much experience, and you know so much. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ears, ears. So many apps shipped to the Play Store and the App Store. Zero, nothing. So have more confidence, wing it, and you, you're going to be fine. So I was um, money. I wanted, to, I wanted to connect this to, to money um, because that's, that's something. You, I, I think I have some psychological, like, um, I don't know how to call it, break uh, when it comes to money. Like I have some barrier in my head. Maybe it's like I've read in podcasts and I've read in books about uh, being with your tribe and not wanting to disappoint your tribe. Like I come from a poor country and I come from a... Um, I don't want to say poor family because it sounds bad, but we weren't a rich family. And we, like, I, I wanted to make more of myself and to, to do more in life. But I was working against friction. So the, the tribe mentality thing is, like, there's some barrier in the brain that doesn't allow you to move forward and to make more money because you don't want to disappoint your pri tribe. You, wanna, you think that if you move forward, they're not going to like you and they're not going to want to be around you and you disappoint them. So there's something, like, subconsciously your brain is limiting you from opportunities and, and stuff. So... This has been happening to me since the first product that I launched when I was 18. I think I was 18 years old or 19. I don't know. It was in college. And like it was going uphill and I started making marketing plan and everything as soon as it made money, which was a lot of money for me who hasn't made money before. As soon as it made money, I, um, I think I mentioned this before. It was the number three website in the country or number. Yeah, I think it was number three. It was like Google Yahoo, uh, maybe number five. I, I have a screenshot somewhere from the analytics, but I know it was in top five for sure. And it, it could have been big because the sites below me, they had companies, they had employees, they had structures and everything. I was just a guy, a guy in college who was having more views. So with the right people, the right marketing plan, as soon as I had a meeting with some random people and they gave me money, they paid me in cash. Like I wasted that cash on concerts and I, like the project died. So there's some psychological thing there. Like um, when it comes to support, like for my family, I always had friction because they didn't, like they didn't know what I was talking about and the world of startups and making money was never, you know, familiar with them. But also that's kind of an excuse. I think that if someone is really supportive to you, like this was very mind blowing to me when I was watching the Kanye documentary on Netflix and I saw his mom, like he was sad about an album or something or something didn't go wrong. And um, like he, um, he, with his friends, they were in the city where his mom lived and they, like Kanye was like moped down on the floor, like so freaking sad. He was like, so, you know, pulled into himself and didn't believe in himself. And his mom, like, is probably not in the world of rap or hip hop or doesn't know shit. And probably she wasn't really sure if her son can be, you know, the best in hip hop or whatever. But man, the way she spoke to him and the way she injected, like, th th watch the episode. The Kanye documentary, even though Kanye has gone off the reels lately, just watch the Kanye documentary. It's very inspiring. The way his mom talked to him and the way he she inspired confidence in him, like, but why are you doubting yourself? You're Kanye. Like she, just, sometimes you just need a nudge. Even if the person, like I want to be like that for my daughter, you know, just give her a nudge. Even when I, I might doubt that you'll make it in a certain thing or whatever. Sometimes all you need is that push. So for me, I was always working against friction. Every time I said, 
And even I proved something. I was like, hey, I have this idea. What I got from my parents. And especially my mom was like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. So it's always like, what what are you going to do? And you like, it's the meme of Indian parents, you know, like someone can be a multimillionaire with a startup and they'll be like, yeah, but you didn't finish medical school, right? So it was very similar to that. I had to work against friction. And even when I would prove myself for the next thing, like I remember we won Startup Weekend and I called my mom and I'm like, mom, we're going to form a company. We got, we won Startup Weekend number one. And she was like, all right, but it's scary. You know that one day you'll have to close that company and that costs money. So you know, as much as I didn't let that, you know, completely overpower me because obviously I've made it in life and obviously I made a lot of money, it was still working against friction. And if I had, if, if I just had some, what do they call it, wind in my sails, if I just had some push, I think I would have gotten even further. So there's some psychological things that I have around money, which I need to work out, obviously, to get to the next level because I'm constantly leaving money on the table. Like four days ago, someone told me the CZ pricing page is broken, which means literally I have three DMs right now from people like, hey, I want to introduce this as an enterprise product in my company or whatever, which means a lot of money. And I just opened the DM and I'm like, oh, but I need to record a podcast or whatever. Someone would just jump on that opportunity and be like, oh, I got to fix that. I have a couple of clients and there's money being left on the table. So I was like, maybe this should have been a separate episode where I only talk about this, um, about my relationship with money. But I'm even, you know what I'm thinking? Like if with all of these psychological barriers and if I, my way of thinking is this broken and I got here, if I just fix something, I can get like to 10x level, maybe 100x levels if I just fix this barrier that I have. I remember um, having like I probably had, I don't know, at least five, six, seven, maybe 10 calls with investors. I need to write these numbers down because I'm forgetting. It's been a couple of years ago. When CZ started, um, I was talking with investors and like they literally, even even before CZ was a desktop app, they you, like I get an email. I opened the clients from these investors and I'm like, holy shit, they invested in Twitter, in Uber and whatever. And there's something in me that's like, oh, yeah, but I don't know, dude. And I don't know, maybe it's not for me. Like there's some fear. There's something, you know, like, hey, someone's offering you money. I could have made CZ a product. This was 2018, I think. I could have made it explode then. Then I started having, you know, calls with all of these investors invested in super popular companies. Nothing. I rejected all of them. Uh, but I remember one scenario, I was talking to a friend and he was like, man, if you get so many offers that like, you can craft your own rules and you, even you can get a lot of money in cash. If so many people are interested, you can tell someone, for example, he said, like, yeah, I would take this investment, but also if you give me like a million dollars, just personal million dollars and also, um, you know, investment in the company. So this was more like an anecdote. It wasn't like, I don't think that VC works like that, especially now they're more stingy with the money. But back then, like you have tw like 10 people interested, you, you might have leverage and you might be like, yeah, I mean, like all of these companies want to invest. I would like some like huge salary or whatever, or let's say a million dollars, but even when he mentioned those hypothetical million dollars and whatever, I remember having that call with like, he's super popular in the, in the world of startups. And I remember hanging, hanging up with him and going downstairs to tell my wife, I'm like, do you know what this guy said? Like he mentioned that I might get a million dollars. And I'm like, but that's scary. Like that would solve all my problems. I don't want that. And then I caught myself saying that. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? You fucking psychopath. Who says that I don't want a million dollars because they're going to solve all of my problems. So my thinking is really broken here. There's this book that I have. I think it's this green book. No, that's the ballads of the songbirds and the snakes. But there's another green book. Um, you're a badass at making money up there. This one, I know it's green. You're a badass at making money. It's, um, it doesn't go that deep, but um, I really love this book. I need to reread it. It's about like your beliefs and what you feel. And that you, like, I really believe in that, that if you feel them and if you believe that you're going to get and you deserve something, you're going to get it. And if you don't, like I am a lot of times, I just leave money on the table. I treat money horribly. I don't care how much I spend. I'm paying too many subscriptions and things. And anytime I see something that I need to cancel, I'm like, huh, maybe next month. I don't respect money in a way. And that's why, like, I cannot pay off the house immediately. And that's why, like, any, like, I cannot get to the 10x level because I treat money this way. And I still don't think that I don't deserve million dollars appearing out of nowhere. Or when I see, I don't know, Peter Level's MRR or some crazy numbers, like 300K of MRR. It sounds like something like, no, that would be too scary or too whatever. So I got to fix that shit, man, because it's it's horrible to to think like that. Um, we're almost nearing 30 minutes. I was I wanted to mention a David Goggins podcast, but that's um. maybe we should we should finish the podcast with this or maybe we should talk about it next time. I think I'm going to talk about it. Let me just think. I'll pause. I'm going to leave the David Goggins part because it was super interesting. I want to talk about it more tomorrow. It was from a podcast with um, Huberman, but I want to tie this up and finish talking about this money. So I caught myself, like I moved here to Poland 
And I lived in an apartment for a couple of years. And I liked a lot of things about the place. Like I love the nature here, the beach, the sun. The sun, <laughs> when it's sunny, it's really nice. And I li live close to the beach. So I liked a lot of things about Poland. But sometimes when you look at my neighborhood, you know, when you just look at photos offline, offline, yeah. Sometimes I look at photos offline. I download them and I look at photos of Miami offline. Like I got invited to a conference in Miami and I just Googled Miami. And you look at these cities like Miami, New York, whatever. It's like, what the fuck am I doing with my life, dude? I, I, I don't know if that's good thing or bad thinking, but just looking from out from my window in that apartment, I'm like, how did I end up here? Like, I think I, um, I need to move on with my life and I need to move to another place because I'm not challenged enough here. And I got my dream house, let's say. Like, this was really my dream house. I had a list, if you believe me or not, I had a list of things when I was doing affirmations and gratitude and everything in the morning. I had a list of things that I want my house to have and everyone thought that I was crazy. So I wanted to have a cinema room. I wanted to have a sauna. I wanted to have a pool. I wanted to have all of these things and people are like, you're never going to find this house. And I'm like, well, I'm not buying a house then. So we were arguing with my wife, arguing with my family. They, you know, they, they were like, you're asking too much. So we found a nice house. We went, visited. Even my, my, my wife's parents visited the house. And they were like, well, what, what more do you want? And like, I couldn't fully open the door for my car. So I just imagine, you know, I, I would have to just squeeze in like this. And I imagine we're going to have a kid soon and baby seats and everything. And I want something bigger. I want something nicer. I want that cinema room, sauna and everything. And I just said, no. And they were like, what the fuck? This was the perfect house. So I was just determined that I'm going to get it. But now that I got it, it's three floors. It's so many rooms. It has everything that I have. I just think the surroundings bug me now. Like, I meant for something more. I meant to be challenged. I have a friend who moved from uh, Slovenia to San Francisco just because he was like the biggest cat in town, let's call it, in Slovenia. He was making so much money. He was so much better than all of his friends that it made him a bit lazy. It made him a bit, you know, not ambitious enough. So I think I've fallen into this hole. Like here, I'm not going to conferences. I'm not hanging out with entrepreneurs. I'm not hanging out with creative people. And now that I bought this house, I'm more than ever in like isolation. Like everything is here. The gym is in the house. Cinema is in the house. No, fr I, I literally have no friends here. I had like one, two acquaintances, let's call them. Like I would see this guy. I, in four years, I saw him a couple of times, let's say. So I wouldn't call that a friend. But I'm putting myself in this bubble which is like very bad for growth. So I already started thinking like this is, we haven't even had this, the house for for one year. And I'm already thinking, man, in a couple of years, I need to move. Like it's a feeling that I get deep, deep within me that I need to move to a better place. And one place that comes to mind is London. Like I know it's not as safe as Poland and I know that certain things like the weather is not that good or whatever, but I just want to be in a city that has more, more museums, more concerts, more things to go to. Now ask me, am I going to museums, concerts, whatever, when they happen in the city? No, I don't. But I still feel like I want to be in, in, a, in a city that has more life. So the house aside, like I bought this house in a, it's a nice place. It's a chill place. And my daughter will grow up and probably will stay here for a couple of years. And it, I, I'm happy that she'll grow up in a very calm place, let's call it. Um, like the crime rate and everything is like super low here and everything is super nice. But I need something more because I am i i don't like that I'm asking that question too much in my life. What the fuck am I doing with my life? Because it's very hard to zoom out, you know? You do it, you do it, you do it for years and then you zoom out and you're like, oh, whoa, where where are the years, have, where have the years gone? So, you know, when I was thinking and now I, I'm thinking guilty like, wait, but this was my dream house and then I catch the sentence, this was my dream house, but I want more. I always talk about warmer countries like Spain and Portugal and I want to, you know, I want to live... Like I live here near the sea, but it's very cold from like November to May. The weather is very cold here and I complain and then I forget for a couple of months. So I have more aspirations. I have more needs, but I get stuck to like, no, but this was my dream house and we're going to change the windows this year. So I want to get to a point. Let's let's try to wrap up where I'm going to make so much money that I'm going to fucking pay off this house and I'm going to renovate everything that I want to renovate, but I'm not going to feel it as a financial burden. I don't want it to get calculated like, oh, but that's going to cost 10,000 euros and it's a huge investment. I want 10,000 euros to be like one euro is right now. I want to get to to that to that point. I don't want to get stuck to, this was my dream house, this was my dream car. Like I bought my dream car, the Tesla Model 3, a couple of years ago. And it was my dream car. Now when I have a kid, it's not my dream car anymore. Like I would want to upgrade to Tesla Model X, which costs 130,000 euros, which is a scary number, dude. When I go... And I added to cart on the Tesla website. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is too much money. I'm like, remember, like 65,000 was also too much money for you at some point. And you got to it. So I want to surround myself with, you know, more people that 
that that that push me to go forward maybe that's why i started this podcast maybe you know keep commenting keep talking i like the conversations that we're starting and everything i need to get to a place where i get pushed further i don't want to stay here i don't want to stay not physically here i don't want to stay and just you know spin the wheels in one place i think that i'm um i think that i'm destined for more this might sound cocky it might sound weird it like it depending from which position you see it like someone m- might have achieved way more than me and be like what the fuck have you achieved you know and someone might achieve less than me and be like oh you fucker you got it all and why do you want more and blah 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 but definitely there's more to unpack here like i already took more minutes than i wanted to talk about this but i'm going to keep talking about it in um uh in the future podcast because i think money and making money and everything is just something that you sweep under the carpet especially when you aspire to make more money and you say that you have money it's such a taboo topic but start complaining about money and everyone is like what oh i also cannot pay rent oh i'm also struggling it seems like you can see happiness in people's eyes when you complain about not having money but when you talk about having money you know which is nice i love you i love people who share with me how did they make it what do they do like i remember being at a conference and a friend telling me hey man we got court side seats for the mba like i get interested i get inspired i'm like oh that's so nice how much do they cost i'm not one of those people who shrivel and their face is going to start dancing like this muscle <laughs> Uh uh-huh. so uh, like i i get inspired from these kind of stories so hopefully you get inspired you won't get you know like if we cuz money is going to be a topic in this podcast and i would love to talk more about it because it's a taboo topic and people are like i make how much i make and it doesn't matter and maybe one day if you know something magical happens i'm going to get to a different place so anyway i have plenty of other points that i wanted to talk about today so fuck it um i'm going to move all of the content for tomorrow it's not that important we finally answered this listener question So follow all the links Twitter's Discord's whatever please leave a comment anywhere ask a question put a donut if you want if you watch till the end of the video I really appreciate you guys listening I love love doing this so thank you for listening thank you for watching and who's the singer of Chandelier see ya in the next one